They destined that it works. They destined that it works. Okay. So the topic of today is Renaissance art. And at the end, I will talk about Renaissance literature. Okay, voice words. It's very long. So I'm going to start right. It's well, 300. Okay, let's go. Renaissance art. In the early 15th century begins the culmination of a slow process of recovery of the models of classical antiquity. This return was initiated and soon acquired a high profile in Italy, where there has always been resistance to imported styles from the rest of Europe, where the memory of Roman art could be seen every day. Thus happened the Renaissance, name given by the painter Vasari, which alludes to the rebirth of Greco-Roman culture and civilization. Renaissance is the artistic movement. Humanism is a cultural movement where humans are the center of the universe. Anthropocentrism with Plato as influence, that is, Neoplatonism. The people here have interest in Greek Roman culture, science, and progress, and they use vernacular language. Their most important representant is Erasmus of Rotterdam. The expansion happened by the invention of printing, academies, and universities. Deep religious change, new religiosity with the Counter-Reformation by Luther that proposes the salvation of faith, the lecture of the Bible by all the population, and, rejection and, um, and rejects the selling of indulgences and the power of the Pope. Division in European Christianism, the North is Protestant and the sure and the South is Catholic. Religion wars. So this is a map of Europe in these times. Introduction. Architecture, relation between antiquity and classical worlds, use of perspective, harmonic composition, influence of Roman art, um, influence of Roman art. Uh, war, arts. Entablature, columns, barrel bowl, bolted bowl, dome, Greek cross plant, and an um, Greek cross plant. Um, let's see what forms like art. Okay. Classical influence. The classical world is reinterpreted. Uh, okay. These are examples of the introduction, but not only these pictures here. Profile portraits, portraits. They appear in coins inspired by Roman ones, and the influence will go to paintings too. The Domus Aurea of Nero is discovered. Literature and philosophy. Inspiration in classical sources of literature, like Plato, Aristotle, Cicero, Ovidius, Poliziano, Leonardo Bruni, Lorenzo Valla, but not only this, also inspiration in medieval parties and theory. Anatomy studies. Studies about anatomy very, uh, are very useful in painting and sculpture. There are also studies in optics. The Man of Vitruvius by Leonardo da Vinci shows the human body as perfect because it is included in a circle. Perspective, very important, developed thanks to the optic studies. The last, uh, get this, nothing. Uh, paintings, where you can see clearly the perspective in the architectonic space. Secular themes, portraits, historic scenes, and mythological scenes. Uh, these are examples. Religious themes reinterpreted with characters more humanized and even appearing portraits of real people and even self-portraits. Uh, portrait, more example, uh, more examples on portrait is nothing. David theme, David is heroized with examples like Donatello and Michelangelo. Equestrian sculptures are also very important. Yeah, let's see how I do this.
Vitruvia Man by Leonardo da Vinci. And now it starts. Italian 400. Italian 400 is the period of 15th century. It began in Florence, imposed by the Medici family. The artists are more recognized. So yes, a difference you will see over all these artists that the names of the artists appear more of, appear all the, all the time, even for the buildings. Filippo Brunelleschi. He began as sculptor, but later decided to be architect. Ospedale degli Innocenti, horizontal facade, two heights, the superior is for rooms with classic windows, and the inferior is the portico. So this one. Okay, uh, next one. Santa Maria del Fiore, that actually I'm going to say. Uh, Santa Maria dei Fiori, because I think this is the real name. Santa Maria del Fiore. Okay, it's it, the name is fine. Santa Maria del Fiore. He won the competition to do the dome. He did it by doing two domes, one inside the other. And um, like this. He used brick in the nerves to lighten the weight. Between both domes, there is a wooden skeleton. It is a dome with Gothic tradition. So this is the exterior and this is the interior. San Lorenzo, basilical plant of letting cross with various kinds of covers, three naves. The light enters using oculus in the lateral naves. The Beccia Chapel or Or Sacristy is of centralized plant with a dome by Donatello depicting a map of the cosmos. Fasci Chapel, it is little of centralized plant. It has the golden ratio, plant of Greek cross. PD Palace, Rusticated Facade, and Santo Spiritu. This is San Lorenzo. This is the Pachi Chapel. And the PD Palace. Michelozzo Michelozzi, disciple of Brunelleschi. San Agostino, Montepulciano, Gothic influence, Biblioteca Nazionale Marciana. It is like a church with phonic order and potent arches. Medici Riccardi Palace, a masterpiece with a central courtyard, three heights, paying the high ones for living. And this is Caffagiolo Castle, use another construction. So San Agostino Multipulsiano, Palazzo Medici Riccardi. Giuliano da Maiano, disciple of Brunelleschi, Porta Capuana, this one, and Faenza Cathedral, use of pilaster and columns in the lateral chapels. Benedetto da Maiano, disciple of Brunelleschi, Santa Maria delle Grazie, this one. Giuliano da Sangallo, disciple of Brunelleschi, Palazzo Strozzi, Giorgio Vasari said this was by Benedetto da Maiano, but Sangallo did the model. Symmetric facade, interior courtyard, this one. Uh, Santa Maria delle Carceri. Leon Battista Alberti, architect and theoric. With him, the column is decorative and the archers are and the archer arches are over pilasters. Dome is used in all his buildings. Tem Tempio Maladestiano is this like this or Tempio? Tempio Maladestiano. Okay. Tempio Maladestiano, it was Gothic, but he rebuilt it. It has a dome inspired by the Pantheon. Palazzo Rucellai, typical Florentine palace with various heights and great decorations, succession of different orders like in the Colosseum. So this is the Tempio Maladestiano. And this is the Palazzo Rucellai. Actually, is this pronounced like this when it is only one C? To check the translator. Palazzo Rucellai. Okay, I'm pronouncing correctly. <laughs> Santa Maria de la Santa Maria Novella, very decorated facade, Latin cross plant, three naves, and Gothic interior. Use of marbles of colors. Use of golden ratio and symmetry. San Andrea of Manto and San Sebastiano Manto. This is Santa Maria Novella. Bernardo Giambarelli, disciple of Alberti, um, Piccolomini Palace. There are two. One in Pienza, another in Siena. It's the Piccolo Mini Palace. Agostino di Duccio, disciple of Alberti, San Bernardino Perugia, 
one. Francesco Laurana, disciple of Alberti, with Castel Nuovo. Lombardy, the Tuscan characters are mixed with the Gothic tradition, maintained by the construction of the Cathedral of Milan. Pilarete, architect and writer, he also wrote the Sfortinda, a tale even in an imaginary city. Ospedale Maggiore, it was planned as a cross inside a square with a church of centralized plant in the center. This one, the major hospital. Mantegaccia, Certosa di Pavia, great decoration full of reliefs and statues, contract between surfaces with rich textures, buttresses, horizontal marks and arches, also done by the next author. This one, Giovanni Antonio Amadeo. I think this, I'm going to let this a bit confusing. <clears throat> Giovanni Antonio Amadeo, Coleoni Chapel, use of decorations with Rome formed in polychrome marble with white, red, and black colors. Venice, the Lombard influence is mixed with the Gothic tradition in civil architecture. Here works Pedro Lombardo and his sons Antonio and Tullio. Santa Maria de Miracoli, one nave with barrel vault with statues of Tullio and more outdoors, and a bowl decorated with faces of prophets. Palacio Benjamin Calergi. Here is where died the composer Richard Wagner. Here is where the composer Richard Wagner. It has three floors, classic columns with paintings and sculptures in the interior. Santa Maria de Miracoli and Palacio Benjamin Calergi. Palazzo dei Diamanti, curious by the Bosage, and Palazzo Ducale in Urbino. Federico de Montefeltro has influence in this castle that is propagandistic. The construction began with Luciano Laurana that has knowledge of Greek art. One of the difficulties was the landscape. In the packet, there are two cylindrical towers, and it also has a courtyard, and there are representations of ideal cities. Palazzo dei Diamanti and Palazzo Ducale in Urbino. And finally, Piazza del Campidoglio, it is stuck in the center of the world. This was done by Michelangelo. Okay, now it's sculpture. Italy here is very, very long. It will be half of the presentation, even more than half. This is the introduction. Well, I can show a bit these the different forms. Mythological paintings, um, you see mythological painting and here in the coins. Here, the same painting and coins. Mythology and philosophers, drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. More Leonardo da Vinci. This is the optical studies. This is how the perspective is done with the architecture, more portraits, this a battle, this mythology, this is Christian, Christian, different topics, portraits, more portraits. This one is very beautiful. Piero di Cosimo. Okay, I'm going to save this because I want to add Probably this painting. I like this one. I didn't know this before. More portraits. Some sculptures. This is David. And a question sculpture. Okay. <clears throat> so architecture. The Hospital of the Innocents. Notice of this here. With uh, small sculptures. Santa Maria dei Fiore. And this is how he made the domes. This is the structure of the dome. San Lorenzo. Cap uh, Pazzi Chapel. Pitti Palace. Palazzo Medici Riccardi. I'm showing this mostly because more pictures, more pictures than in the other 
presentation, palazzo Strozzi. Temple, eh, Tempio Malatestiano, Palazzo Rucellai, Santa Maria Novella. Here the details is, are very beautiful. Here, see a detail. Mayor Hospital. Here the sculptures and the decoration is just wonderful. Coleoni Chapel. Here also very nice decoration. You see here these squares, the cubes. This is close to water. This is the Palace of Diamonds. Again, this decoration in the walls. Campidoglio. This is the planning. Okay, now a sculpture. Sculpture in Italy began also in Florence, but it came before the architecture. Lorenzo Ghiberti, he won the competition for the second doors of the Baptistery of Florence. In that competition also participated Brunelleschi with scenes of the life of Jesus. He also did the third doors of the same baptistery called the Doors of Paradise by Michelangelo and scenes of the Old Testament. By the way, who is this pronounced? Michelangelo or want to say the name is correct? Michelangelo. Okay, Michelangelo. Okay. So here are the doors, the second doors and the third doors. Jacopo de la Quercia. He is from Siena. The Porta Magna has various religious images, with the Virgin and San Petronio. The Fonte Gaia has many classical characters at Gaia, Rea Silvia, and Acca Laurentio. Donatello. He is the most important quattrocentist sculptor. Great naturalists and as showed in San Marco, San, Ho San George, San John Evangelist, and Sucone. He also does the Cantoria of the Cathedral of Florence with musician children dancing and running with similar composition to the pulpit of Prato. One of his most known artworks is David Bargello with Contraposto and also the portrait of Niccolo da Uzzano a psychological portrait. Here are some of his artworks, this is the David Bargello. He also did reliefs with the Sciacciato, a technique for reliefs to do bas reliefs with minimal variation, as in the Feast of Herodes in the baptismal font of Siena, and even more in the Annunciation of Santa Croce. Also the bas reliefs of the altar of the Church of San Antonio in Padua. The monument of Catamelata is very impressive, it is an equestrian sculpture. In his last period in Florence, there are the, the Judith and Olofernes and the Pulpitos of San Lorenzo, one is the pulpit of resurrection, the first one with scenes of the life of Christ after his death. The pulpit of passion is the second and has the scenes of the passion of Christ without the Last Supper. So here are some of his artworks. Catamelata, here the Judith and Oloferne and the pulpit of passion. Luca de la Robbia, he liked to represent women and children. Bas reliefs of the Campanile of the Florence Cathedral also has Madonnas. Andrea Il Berroccio, more realist than Donatello, he also did a David. Here's the David. Others are the Putto called Delfino and Christ and St. Thomas. The most interesting one is the statue of Bartolomeo Coleoni, also an equestrian sculptor with more dynamics than the one of Donatello. This one. It's interesting you see the difference, especially here. Oh, sorry, I can't do the selection. Notice here in the leg that. And the sculptor here put a ball, so it's the horse is sustained, but in here the leg doesn't have ball, so it's like this sculpture is more complicated to do than this. But yes, it, it's done and the sculpture doesn't fall. Antonio Polaiolo, more realist and better anatomic studies. His masterpiece is Hercules and Anteus, with the Greek denominus, this one. Agostino di Duccio, he worked in the facade of San Bernardino in Perugia and the facade of the Malatestian Temple of Rimini. Desiderio da Settignano, not too realist, with the bust of Maria de Strozzi. 
Rossellino Brothers, they are Bernardo and Antonio. Bernardo did the tomb of Leonardo Bruni in Santa Croce, and Antonio did other sepulchres. Benedetto da Magliano, portraitist with Greek natural links, both of Pietro Mellini and Filippo Strozzi. Just here are some of the artworks. And here is painting already, so. Here you will see more artworks. The second, third doors, some sculptures. Jacopo de la Quercia, Font of Gaia, Rea Silvia, Calaurentia. Here are sculptures of Donatello. Here the crucifix. So. Luca de la Robbia, Il Berroccio. Funny this one. Antonio Pollaiolo, Agostino Di Duccio, De Sirieri da Santignano, Rossellino Brothers, and Benedetto da Magliano. Okay, painting. Renaissance painting in Italy began in Florence, following the evolution that began with Giotto. Money is the central topic. They don't know oil at the beginning. There are many schools with great studies of anatomy and perspective. So here there are so many painters that the information is mostly a list of painters. A list of painters in Florence. And here the list of painters and paintings. Okay, Lorenzo Monaco with Madonna, Adoration of the Kings, Coronation and Virgin. Well, I think instead just reading this because this is just the names of the artworks. It's a bit... Um, well. Frangelic, uh, you see Lorenzo Monaco here, Annunciation by Frangelico and Masolino. Here more artists, Masaccio, Paolo Uccello and Fra Filippo Lippi. Here some of Masaccio, here the Expulsion of Paradise. This is the um, uh, something related with a coin. How was this called? The thief, um, tribute money. It's called like that. Um, it's really it's Christian, Christian story. And this is the crucifixion with a perspective in the architecture. Oh, by the way, this is just a virgin, this annunciation, the angel saying the virgin that is going to have a kid, and this is Adam and Eve going out of the garden of Eden, and this is God, and this is Adam and Eve again. Battle of San Romano, of Paolo Uccello. Here is interesting the different positions of the horses. You see this with the legs like that. And here for Filippo Lippi, just virgin with kids. Um, okay, just that. Andrea del Castagno and Piero della Francesca. Andrea del Castagno, this is Dante. There are other, other characters in this place. Like, um, I think this is the fresh. Frescos of San Apollonia, Florence, you see, with Pippo Spano, Farinata, Dante, Boccaccio, and then this is the fresco of the Last Supper, and Piero della Francesca, this is the portrait of Montefeltri. Uh, I think Federico de Montefeltro and his wife, Battista Sforza, and this is the flagellation of Christ. You see, this is Christ, and this they are hating him. Florence, Antonio Pollaiolo, Berroccio, Luca Signorelli, and Benoccio Gocioli. Here, Antonio Pollaiolo with it is Hercules and the Hydra, Berroccio with the Baptins, the Baptins of Christ. And this is the Adoration of the Kings, the, of the Three Kings to, for Jesus. And here, Luca Signorelli, this is the. Uh, frescoes of the Brizio Chapel. Let's 
Sandro Botticelli, Ghirlandaio, and Filippino Lippi. Okay, Sandro Botticelli, this is Portrait of the Medici. Sandro, uh, the uh, Spring, Allegory of Spring, and the Birth of Venus. This is from Ghirlandaio, this is the Last Supper, and this is a portrait. Uh, let me see the name. Um, Uh, the portrait of Giovanna Tornaboni. This Ghirland another Ghirlandaio. This is the. Um, let me check the name. I think it's the Tornaboni Chapel. Tornaboni Chapel. And this by Filippino Lippi. Siena and Umbria, Perugino and Pinturicchio. Perugino is the uh, giving the keys, delivery of the keys. And this the marriage of the Virgin. Marriage of the Virgin, yes. This is the Borgia Runes by Pinturicchio. Andrea Mantegna with this Death Christ, Death Christ and the Triumph of Caesar. Here you can see Julius Caesar and Parnassus. This is Apollo and the Muses. Denise with Pisanello, Gentile Bellini and Giovanni Bellini. Pisanello, Gentile Bellini and Giovanni Bellini. Antonello da Messina, Vittore Carpaccio. This is the Death Christ and Vittore Carpaccio. Okay, Cinquecento. Here you will see now more paintings. So, Lorenzo Monaco, Angelico, Masolino, Masaccio, Paolo Uccello, this is the Battle of San Romano, has three paintings. It's a, it's a triptych. This one, then this other one, and the last one. Fra Filippo Lippi. Andrea del Castaño, this with the different characters, Pipo Spano, Farinata, Dante, Boccaccio, La Sauber, and Piero della Francesca, Antonio Colaiolo, Verrocchio, Luca Signorelli, Benoccio Goccioli, Sandro Botticelli, Pirlandaglio, there are so many painters. Filippino Lippi, Perugino, Pinturicchio, Andrea Mantegna. Triumph of Caesar, it has many paintings. Pisanello. This is the animals. Gentile Bellini. Giovanni Bellini. Antonello da Messina. 
Vittore Carpaccio o oh, Grandis 500 and just in time is saving automatically I'm going to save so give a moment for this program to do it This is what happens when this presentation is so long and then there are pictures that um, are a bit heavy. Actually, this presentation has a weight of half gigabyte. Okay. Cinquecento happened in the Rome of the Popes. One third of the 16th century is the triumph of harmony. The artistic capital city is moved from Florence to Rome, where the Popes are the patrons and protectors of the artists, mainly Julius II and Leo X. In the two thirds of the 16th century, there is an abandonment, abandonment of the harmony, focusing on the decoration. It's the beginning of mannerisms that will triumph in Venice. Architecture. Donato Bramante. In his first works in Milan, there is abundance in decoration, but later he went to Rome and has influence of classic architecture, use of centralized plants covered with domes. San Satiro with decoration well known by its trompe l'oleil in the interior. Trompe l'oleil is false architecture, painted architecture. Yeah, San Satiro. Santa Maria delle Grazie, here is the Last Supper of Leonardo da Vinci, San Pietro in Montorio, he went to Rome and is influenced by classical architecture. This is like a classic tholo, circular plant with Toscan columns, frieze and dome, symbolized at Pietro as the first fundament of church, and also his martyrdom. Santa Maria della Grazie and San Pietro in Montorio. Cloister of Santa Maria della Pace. Two levels, inferior with arches and superior with architrave. Four orders superimposed, Tuscan, Doric, Jonic, and Corinthian. San Pietro in Vatican, he did the first plane. He did the first plane was... Uh, I don't understand this word. The first planning, I think. He is the first planning. It's it's plain like this. Okay. Here's the first planning. Greek cross plant with access in the four arms with a great dome by Michelangelo. It has to be the center of the church, center of peregrination and martyria because the popes are buried here. When Bramante dies, many artists work here. Raphael, Perucci, San Gallo, Michelangelo. Michelangelo and Maderno. So yes, I didn't put much of this because it's very rebuilt and in Baroque it will appear again. So Cloister of Santa Maria la Pace and San Pietro in Vatican. Baldassare Perucci from Roman school, Villa Farnesina, perfect example of Renaissance Villa. The facades are of, great, of orange color, simple and harmonic. In the garden are celebrated important parties with prince, poets, artists, and poets. Antonio da San Gallo also worked in San Pietro in Vatican. Palazzo Farnese follows Florentine models, classic facade with courtyard and interior gardens and frescoes of classic topics. 
Michelangelo Bonarotti uses the elements with the poorest classicism systems of proportions, but wants also to stand out the constructive lines, worked in San Pietro, Vatican, and also in Piazza del Campido Blue. Sagrestia Nuova of San Lorenzo, he considers the tomb as a sculptoric work inside the architecture, monumental scale. Tombs represents how life passes fast. Uh, how life passes fast. Tombs of Giuliano and Lorenzo Medici. Third case of Laurentian library is the it is a staircase of three accesses. Is this like accesses? Three accesses. Three accesses. Okay. Three accesses with grid dynamics that allow to solve the height difference with central space for the pass. Celestial Nuova and the staircase of Florentine Library. The sculptures here will appear later. Vignola, he is a theoric and architect, pre-baroque. Villa Caparola, pentagonal plant with three levels, aspect of fortress with circular courtyard. In the interior, there is a, an elica of stair and also a private chapel. There are paintings of mythological topic, gardens, fonts, and ponds. Villa Julia, ordered by Julio III, it is outside Rome, it is a villa for the family. In the interior, in the garden, is the Nymphaeo, following the model of the Hadrian Villas. Use of caryatids in the superior floor, there are pilasters with a triumphal arch. This is the Villa Caparola, it's really amazing. This is the stair, and this is the Villa Giulia. Church of the Gesù, one nave with open chapels on, in the sides, with dome. It is the first baroque, use of giant order. The facade is done by Giacomo della Porta. This one will appear in Baroque also at the beginning. San Sovino, he worked in Venice. Palace, Palazzo Corner with a facade with open gallery and Biblioteca Marciana with two floors with superimposed orders, very well decorated. Andrea Palladio, he combines very well materials and inspires himself by Roman constructions. Great importance to, to the use of column for decoration to sustain or in giant order. In the, 18th in the 18th century, the English architecture was very influenced by him, and they called Palladianism. One moment. Okay. Basilica Palladiana, one of the first constructions, the most important is the loggia with the Palladian window. The tower is called Tower Bas Bisara. Palazzo del Capitaniato, he introduces here the giant order. Silga Palladiana and Palazzo del Capitaniato. Palazzo Chiericati, it has two heights of superimposed columns, being the lower Doric and the one up Ionic. It has statues in the roof. Villa Capra of centralized Greek cross plant with Ionic columns and a great living room in the center with a dome. Villa Foscari, the interior is well decorated with frescoes of mythological topics. Palazzo Chiricati and Villa Capra. And this is the Villa Foscari. San Giorgio Maggiore, the facade is like a classic temple with only one door and four columns. The best example of Christian temple with classical appearance. And then Chiesa del Redentore, circular plant with a transept with three apses with a great central dome. The facade has four tympanums, one nave with lateral chapels. Here's San Giorgio Maggiore and Chiesa del Redentore. Um, okay, I saw here. Sobramante, different buildings. This one is the, what was? Uh, San Sadio. Yes, I think this is painted, this is not real. So it means uh, the fake architecture is like this, is not real architecture, it's like painting. San Pietro in Montorio. This is how you see. This Basilica of San, Pe San Peter. Or San so this is the original plan. 
This is the Raphael plan and this is the Michelangelo plan. So yes, it's like Michelangelo rescued this plan. this interior Villa Farnesina Palazzo Farnese and with the sculptures of the Medici Vignola de Caprarola Villa Giulia Gesù this is the interior this is Baroque Andrea Palladio, very important buildings here. You see the giant order, it means that the columns are really big. It's like really tall. They are like two floors long. So instead of ending here, they end here in the second floor. And Giorgio Maggiore. And Redentore. Okay, sculpture. At the end of the 15th century begins the Cinquecento. Michelangelo Buonarroti. He lives in Florence and Rome. He enters the workshop of Ghirlandaio and then with the Medicis with Bertoldo di Giovanni. Terribilità means the forces, position, and great expressivity, with a terrible look with anger. Non finito are sculptures that seem to be unfinished. He used marble overall. Madonna della Scala. The Virgin is a stair for the coming of Jesus to earth and also for the mortals to go to heaven. Battle of Centaurs. He did this with only 13 years old, imitating the Paleo Christian sarcophagus. Angel with chandela chandelier. When the Medicis fall, he has to get out of Florence and went to Bologna, where studied Jacopo de la Cercio. Pietà. He went to Rome and he did it to surprise everyone, to show the world he was a master and being in his twenties. There was polemic because the Virgin was not, so, was not old, but he said that it was not necessary. Great realism, serpentinata form. David. He did it when he came back to Florence made with only one block. It is in the stage previous to the action. It has contraposto and it is a mix of pagan Greek influence represented as a Greek hero and Christian because it is a biblical character with terribilita. Sgia de Pietà, the David and the Moses that has the terribilita in the face. Moses, is it for the tomb of Pope Julius II, Great Terribilita? It seems the sculpture is alive, in a stability, neoplatonic influence. He protects the right part, where are the tables of law. The horns are because a mistake translating the Bible. You see, he's protecting the tables of law. Tombs of Medici, the monuments of Giuliano, Vigilant, and Lorenzo Togpul, Tombs near the wall. The statues are allegory of life, in stable equilibrium. Madonna and three pieties, his last artworks with non finito. Here's the tombs of Medici, and this the pietas with non finito. They are not finished on purpose. Andrea Sansovino, disciple of Polaiolo, with Altare del Sacramento, Christ of the Baptistery of St. John Volterra, with Wilfred Lins, and Baptism of Christ, with an angel over the doors of paradise. This is the Baptism baptism of Christ. Jacopo Sansovino, disciple of Andrea Sansovino, from his Florentine period are the Batrius, San Giacomo, and Madonna of San Agostino. In Venice, he is the Madonna of Arsenale, the reliefs of San Marcos, and the giants in the stair of the Palace of Dogs, that are representations of Mars and Neptune. Here, Batrus, and the giants in Palace of Dogs. Niccolo Trivolo, he did the fountain of Hercules and Anteus, very well decorated with putti and animals, being in the top the group of Hercules and Anteus, fighting. 
Alessandro Vittoria, Gisa Retratis, San Sebastián Anchus and Rock. Antonio Begarelli, he works in Modena with the Terracotta Technique, model of Virgin Mary and Holy Woman. Here, Nicolo Trivolo, Alessandro Vittoria, and Antonio Begarelli. Guglielmo de la Porta in Rome, whose masterpiece is the Tomb of San Pedro, in, uh, Tomb of Pablo III in San Pedro. Giovanni Danola in Naples, he had a lot of influence in Spain. He did the sepulchre of Ramon Folk de Cardona and Glesota. Giovanni Danola. Benvenuto Cellini of passionated character, it was also a jeweler. Cellini is a seller, a salt seller for Francois the First of France and Perseus. It is the mythical, uh, mythical hero with the head of Medusa and with his typical attributes. I love this culture. Gian Bologna, statue of Cosimo I, the question and statue in Florence in the pedestal is the symbol of Capricorn of the seal of Cosimo as a symbol of power and leadership. Rape of the Sabine, serpentinata form with movement, Hercules and Neso, great expression of movement, and fountain of Neptune and monumental font with a statue of Neptune in the center. It is a fountain with great erotic content. The narrates expel waters by the Nipples. So Jan Bologna and Fountain of Neptune. Yes, here the Nipples um the water is coming from the Nipples of the narrates. In the picture you will see better. So this the sculptures of Michelangelo. The Pietà. So he did this with around 20 years old. Very impressive. The David. The Moses. The Medici tombs. Madonna and the Pietas, San Sobino, Nicolo Trivolo, Alessandro Vittoria, Antonio Begarelli, Guglielmo de la Porta, Giovanni Danola, Benvenuto Cellini. This is just wonderful, I love this culture. Cosme Fils with Gian Bologna. The most interesting here is the last. Font of Neptune. I think there should be, yeah. You see? The, the Nipples, the water is coming from the Nipples. Okay, let's continue. Painting. The great painters of Cinquecento, being Rome, the main center, are the ones who synthesize the development obtained in the Quattrocento, defining the formal perfection. After this, the artists will only copy their creation, happening in the manneries. Here there are the four great artists. Are Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo Bonarotti, Raffaello Sancho, and the last one is Correggio. Leonardo da Vinci, he is the Renaissance man, the best of all of them, because he wanted to know about all. As a painter, he didn't do many artworks, but the ones he did are very interesting and still continue being investigated. His master is about the sfumato, to blur the shadows and borders, great atmosphere. atmosphere. Adoration of the Magi, Unfinis, the Virgin is surrounded by the Magi, Virgin of the Rocks, here appear the Virgin, Jesus and John and the Angel, being in the background what seems to be a cave. You can see clearly the sfumato. And Virgin and Child with Santa Anna, this one. The scene is in a timeless rocky landscape. You can see the sfumato. Christ is playing with the lamb near clear symbolism with the death of Christ. La Sopper, one of his most uh, famous works, in the table appear 13 characters in a classical architecture with linear perspective. He tried to paint it in a kind of fresco he invented to be able to do correction, but it wasn't a good idea after all. So this is the La Sopper. And the Yoconda, it is a portrait of a lady, very mysterious, with a Leonardesque smile. 
that we don't know if she is happy or not. You can clearly see the sfumato. Michelangelo Buonarotti, essentially a sculptor, he also worked as painter. Great musculature delimited in the borders, just the opposite to the Leonardesque sfumato. Holy Family, it was his first artwork, Battle of Pisa, you can see the musculatures very well. Sistine Chapel, the Pope Julius II said him to paint the vault. He painted there scenes of Genesis with heroes, civils, and prophets, naked figures that were repainted and enclosed when Michelangelo died. The final judgment is the great masterpiece. The main character is Jesus, that is with an angry expression, punishing the sins of humanity. Maria is next to him, around them there are the saints and angels, below are the humans in earth. The dead resurrect and with help of angels go to heaven, but the sinners are thrown into hell. The player is king, it is said it is a self-portrait of the old Michelangelo. Other masterpieces the creation of Adam, one of the scenes of Genesis. God is an old man with beard in a circular surface, and Adam is naked in the ground in a triangle. So this is the Sistine Chapel. And here are the creation of Adam and the last judgment. Raffaello Sancio, this one has a lot of very important paintings. He is a master of all times. Despite he died very young, he did lots of paintings. About his first period before going to Florence are the three graces, the dream of the night, the coronation of the Virgin and the marriage of the Virgin. In the second period, the teaching of Umbria and Florence are assimilated, and here there are the Madonna Gran Duca, Madonna of the Goldfinch, Holy Family Canigiani, Madonna of the Baldacin, and Boy of Christ. So as I say, many, many important paintings here. The Three Grace. This is the um, Resurrection, I think. Coronation of the Virgin. Yes, here the Coronation. Um... This is the marriage of the Virgin. Here, more Virgin related paintings. In the, his third period, he works in the rooms of Vatican by order of Julius II. Here, he paints on frescoes. The dispute of the sacrament represents of Christ and the apostles and below the popes and theologists. The school of Athens represents many of the old saints in a kind of Roman temple. Other is Parnassus, where he represents nine poets of antiquity and other contemporary poets. Gregorio IX gets the decretals. Pivoniano giving the uh, Pivoniano giving the Pandectas to Justinian. Just different scenes. Dispute of the Sacrament, School of Athens, and Parnassus. Then he worked in the room of Heliodorus. Here there are the expulsion of Heliodorus, Misa de Bolsena, Liberation of St. Peter, and Encounter of Leomagno and Attila. The triumph of Galatea is very nice. In the center of Galatea is a shell where two dolphins act as the animals who move the kind of car chariot. He also did portraits as Baltasar de Castiglione, Julius II, and Leo X. Madonna Sistina fell in the way to Calvary, Transfiguration for Narina, it is said she was his lover. So Rafael Sancho was different. Paintings. And this supposedly his lover. Correggio. Diffuse luminosity. Atmos atmosphere is very important and reflects our light. Great chromatis, Cingarella with influence of Leonardo, decoration of the Church of St. John Evangelist with the ascension and coronation of the Virgin, mystic marriage of St. Caterina where he does the smiling feminine kind. In night, you can see his studies of artificial light. In his last years, he did mythological paintings, studying the naked woman as in Danae, Rape of Ganymedes, and Io and Jupiter. Here he studies of dark environment and these mythology scenes. Okay. Here you will see more paintings. Leonardo da Vinci. These drawings. This the smile. Michelangelo Buonarotti. This is Jesus and the last judgment. You see the muscles, all the men have the big muscles, and, I, and even women have big, 
his muscles. This is supposed to be the self-portrait of himself. And this is the creation of Adam. And then Rafael Osantio. Regrace. Coronation of the birds. Married of the Virgin. Or Virgin. encourage you Mannerings Mannerings comes from Maniera in reference to the artworks made in the, the manner of the great masters of Renaissance imitation of the artworks of Leonardo, Raffaello and Michelangelo patrons were aristocrats who wanted complicated allegories more Italian painters. I say that Italy was very long. Toscani. Fra Bartolomeo della Porta, he applies architectonic valor to his compositions. Portrait of Savonarola, Vision of San Bernardo, Pietà, Presentation in the Temple. Andrea del Sarto, he received influences of Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raffaello, and the Venetians. He paints the beard of the Virgin, where appears his characteristic feminine topic, portrait of his wife, his masterpiece, the Madonna of the Arpies, where the Virgin appears over a pedestal decorated with harpies. It is the triumph of Mario of an, over evil, portrait of a sculptor, despot of Trinity and Pietà. Bartolomeo de la Porta, Andrea del Sarto. Pontormo, his masterpiece is his descent, very colorful, very modeled forms and united by serpentinata form. Bronzino, one of the best portraits, and then here some of his artworks. Allegory of the Triumph of Venus. The goddess is represented with the apple of this court in, his, in her hand and kissing Cupid, being the main theme, the erotins, and the forbidden love. Contormo and Bronzino. Lombardi, Bernardino Luini, influence of Leonardo with Virgin of Rosebus. Sodoma, he did the nuptials of Alexandro and Roxana, a fresco in Villa Farnesina where Alexander the Great is with Roxana and his lover, Ephestion. Rape of Sabines, Madonna in the long neck. Madonna of the long neck was made so because he was so impatient for making her to look elegant that painted her a long neck, as swans. Bernardino Luini, Sodoma. Parmagianino, Portrait is Antea, Turkish Leo and Madonna di San Zaccario. Um, I think this one is the Virgin of the Long Neck, so I think... One moment, I think that is a mistake. Sarto, Contormo, Bronzino, Bernardino Luini, Sodoma. Yeah, Virgin of Long Neck, one more, Virgin of Long Neck, Parmigianino, Parmigianino, yes, so, Sorry, I. This is just an error. This Quarocci. Venice, this. Well, I'm going to show this now here. Quarocci. There's more paintings. Okay, Venice. 
The school of Venice began with Bellini and Carpaccio and continues with the next ones. This city is ideal for his painting because it is a water city with foggy nature, preeminence of color, importance of secondary themes, exaltation of wealth and contemplation of the landscape. Giorgione, his paintings usually have hidden meanings hard to understand. Judith, Tempest, Venus of Dresde, erotic connotations, pastoral concerts, two men in herb and two naked women whose topic is allegory of poetry and music. Three philosophers of different ages. Here, Venus of Dresde. And this Giorgione. Yes, it's the same. This is also Giorgione, of course. Tiziano Bethelio, this is the master of mannerings. He did lots of paintings of great quality. This one also very long. Use of vivid and luminous color. His face with paintings with lyric sentiment. Um, with lyric sentiment. Adoration of the Sephards. Noli metanchere, flora, representation of the ideal of beauty. Ascension of virgin, sacred and profane love. Allegory about the eternal beauty is a reflection of celestial beauty. Second phase when he is more free and in his personality. Signing colors. Bacchanal of Andrians, Bacchus and Ariadna, offering to Venus, Venus and Adonis, Rape of Europe, Playing of Martias. Different mythological paintings. So this Nori Metangere, this different paintings. Sacred and Profane Love, mythological. Paintings, more mythological paintings. Third phase, quiet observation, more portraits and narrative scenes. Portrait of Andrea Gritti, Venus of the Urbino, the lady is not divine, she is more human, the flowers are about their things. Fourth phase, he leaves the national inns. Charles V in Milbert, Charles V resting. Fifth phase, influenced by the great religious and mythological topics. Allegory of Lepanto. Appears Felipe II with his son um, Fernando facing an angel. Like this. Uh, here. Sixth phase is his last period. The death of his wife and friend made him to feel loneliness. Venus recreating with her love to music, Dana receiving the golden rain, body of Christ, Pietà, Nymph, and Sepphers. Tintoretto, he is also a great painter, and this is all of them different paintings. Crucifixion, this the, is Jesus cleaning the feet, when washing the feet of the apostles, here Jesus, washing the feet. Veronese, religious thematic, apotheosis of Venice, feet in the house of Levi, different paintings, all of these are paintings. And Bassano with influence of Tintoretto, and more paintings. Feast in the house of Levi, more Veronese, this is Jesus uh, teaching the doctors in the temple. This is Battle of Lepanto. Here Veronese and Bassano. And the last one, Giuseppe Artimboldo. As curiosity, this painter paints spirits and vegetables and they look like faces. It is awesome. Okay, I saw more. Giorgione. Tiziano. Oh, um, yes, it's saving. I'm going to say no. Tintoretto. Veronese. Passano. 
art in bold or this different painting of art in bold. Okay, and now Italy is fin finally finished. Um, while uh, this is saving, I think this is from Quattrocento, Piero di Cosimo. Yes, from Quattrocento. Nice portrait. I will love it later. Okay. France. Now different countries. Architecture. It is introduced by the contact with Italy and also Italian artists that go to war to France, that work in the castles. And Boise Castle, this castle has the tomb of Leonardo da Vinci, a Thaile Rideau Castle, very Italian, Italian insult, Gailon Castle, Blois Castle, in the center it has an elegant stair, stand out the wing of Louis the Twelfth due to its brick polychrome, and the wing of Francois the First with the stair. Boys and Blois. Chambord Castle, the biggest of all the Loira castles, but was built to be the haunt pavilion of Francois I. The original design was made by Domenico da Cartona, but was changed. It is believed that Leonardo da Vinci was implicated. Banchai Castle, very classicist with a great garden. And Chenonso Castle, squared plant, it has the gardens of Diana of Poitiers and Catherine de Medici, and also a labyrinth. Tambor and Valentine. Palace of, Palace of Fontainebleau. The Renaissance was firstly imported from Italy to Fontainebleau, and this is a good artwork to show it. Uh, Ducal Palace of Nevers with polygonal towers. I support this is Palace des Bosques, the oldest square of Paris built by Henry IV and Pierre L. Scott, Louvre Pacader, very classicist. Fontaine Blow and Nervous. Oh, and this is the Lord of Accord. Philibert de Lorme and Ed Castle. He studied in Italy and he is the official architect of the royal constructions out of the Louvre. The Facade is like a great triumph art. Philibert de Lorme, to Julius Palace. It was a royal palace where kings lived. It was burned by the revolutionaries. Jean Boulant, Equin Castle, very Italian answer. Annette and Equin. Sculpture. The sculpture was introduced by the expedition of Charles VIII, that brings with him uh, that brings with him artists like Guido Bassoni. Importation of Genovese marbles. A family from Florence is established in Tours. The Giusti, Giovanni Giusti, tombs of Louis the Fourth and Louis the Fourth, tomb of Louis the Twelfth in Saint Denis with form of temple. Michel Colombe, Tom of Francois I, combines Gothic with Renaissance. Il Rocio, Gallery of Francois I. Giovanni Giusti and Michel Colombe, and this is the Gallery of Francois I. Pierre Rebontemps, Tom of Francois I, figure from the Tom of Charles de Magny. Jean Gujon, Fontaine de Sinocent, with Sinus female form. Germain Pilon, monument containing the heart of Henry II. The ladies are the three graces. And another one, German Pilon, Monument of Henry II, and Catherine de Medici's Resurrection. Pierre Fontaine, Jean Gouffon, German Pilon. And the last one, Ligier Richier, Sepulchre of the Heart of René de Chalons, the skeletons offer his the skeleton offers his heart to God. Ligier Richier, Mice Autumbo in Church of Saint Etienne, the Burial of Christ, imitated in the Michelangelo. This one is the most impressive. Painting. With the military expeditions, the influence appears, and also Italian painters will work for the kings of France. Fontainebleau School. Fontainebleau School. Diana as a hunter. As a 
Huntress. As a Huntress, the Italians are the creators of the school of Fontainebleau with the influence of Prima Dicio. Jenkus in the Elder, Eva Prima Pandora, there is a thing representing as a sign saying Pandora. In the background, the city is represented with Sfumato, influence of Da Vinci. The school represents death, and the serpent is like the Eve serpent, and the apple branch remembers the forbidden fruit and also the Pandora's box. Jenkus in the Jung, the last judgment. So this is Eva Prima Pandora and Jenkus in the Junger. Jean Clouet, portrait of Francois I with Flemish influence. Francois Clouet, portrait of Elizabeth of Austria, Bath of Diana. In Bath of Diana, it is said that the figures of the goddess and the man in the horse are the king Henry II and his lover Diana of Poitiers. Francesco Primaticcio, Odysseus and Penelope, Rape of Helena, Caritas, Holy Family with Saint Elizabeth and John the Baptist, Annunciation. He was a painter that influenced a lot of French painters. So you see Jean Clouet, Francois Clouet, and Francesco Primaticcio. Antoine Caron, Dionysius, the Aeropagite, converting the pagan philosophers, just different paintings. Marge Sacred of the Tumbirate, Funeral Procession of Love, Augustus and the Civil of the Tiber, these two are the most important. His style has large and delicate figures with strident colors and extravagant architectures. Antoine Caron, Augustus and the Civil, this one represents the coming of Christ to Roman Emperor Augustus. This. This is the, the Augustum and the Civil, and this is the Chumbirate. And this is German, okay. So here are the different castles. Palace of Fontainebleau. Sculpture, different sculptures. And this one, the most amazing. Now painting. See here Augustus and the civil. So this is Augustus the civil, and this is the coming of Christ, announcing the birth of Christ and such. And this is Tumbirato, the massacres of Tumbirato. Okay, Germany. The political and social conditions of Germany were not very good for the introduction of Italian Renaissance forms. In some aspects, there is no transition between Gothic and Baroque. This is due to the Counter-Reformation. Architecture. The education of the architects are from copies of engravings that come from the other side of the Alps, that will apply to buildings without any architectonic logic. In the second half of the 16th century, the influence of the Flemish masters is more important. Fugger Funerary Chapel, the first artwork of German Renaissance in Augsburg. Castle of Erten, it is a complex of two parts. The main castle is a building made with red bricks surrounded by water, with circular towers in the corners. There is a chapel in an island separated of the pit. In the west, a third island is in the pit at south, probably used as garden. Your Ted Castle in Poland, now it is a museum. Landsul residence in Bavaria, Italian artists built, built this residence for the Dukes. Heidelberg Castle it was destroyed by a few raids. It is partially rebuilt. He Herten and Heidelberg. Sculpture, various cards here, principally little ones. Peter Beecher, Tom of John and Cicero of Brandenburg. Peter the John, Virgin of Nuremberg, Wooden Instrument of Torture, and Alexander Collins, Tombs of Maximilian in Innsbruck. Uh, I'm going to check that. Alexander Collins. I 
interesting. One moment. When to fix that also. Oh, and there was a mistake that I also had to finish in Italian. Let me remember, it was in the Mannerings. Parmagianino. It was in here. Just a moment, I want to correct this. Okay, this is fine. It's just this was changed for some reason. Okay. So I was with the culture. So here, Peter Vizier, Peter de Jong, and Alexander Collin. Painting. The engravings are very used, predominance of line over color. Since 1550, the religious war finished uh, finishes without the artistic production. Albrecht Dürer from Nuremberg, son of a jeweler, he receives the Italian influence from two travels to Italy, where he stays in Venice. He also goes to the Netherlands. Before his Italian influence, there are engravings like the Four Riders and Apocalypse by St. John and the Seven Head Dragon, and also the great melancholy engraving with Italian influence. With his travels to Italy, he shows a better application of color. With Adam and Eve or the Four Apostles, with Flemish influence, you can find paintings like the Portrait of Man. More examples of his painting are the Adoration of the Magi, Jesus and the Doctors, and Geronimus, Knight Dead and the Devil. Rabbit, rhinoceros, and money self portraits. Here are the engravings, Adam and Eve, and these are self portraits. These self portraits for me are the best. Hans Baldung Green, he was disciple of Durer from Strasbourg. He is the best colorist of Germany. Self portraits, the three graces. He has, he has macabre artworks like Woman and Death, Two Lovers and Death, and Three Ages of Life and Death. Uh, the one called Three Witches is curious that it was done in Renaissance. Matthias Grunewald, he is the most German painter of the Hermann Renaissance. His masterpiece is the altarpiece of Isenheim. He painted mainly religious artworks, especially dark but full of color, mocking of Christ, Virgin of Stupa, and Resurrection. Here, Hans Baldung Grien, different. And Matthias Grunewald. Hans Holbein, the younger, the best painter of portraits of German Renaissance from Augsburg, portraits of Erasmus of Rotterdam, Virgin of Burgomaster Majors, um, Henry VIII, the ambassador, Thomas More, and Body and Death of Death Christ. Albrecht Arndorfer from the Nubia School, he was architect and painter. Architect architect and painter, and he likes the architectonic perspective of the landscapes. The painting of the Battle of Alexander Adissos is about Alexander the Great in a battle against King Darius III in 333 BCE. Resurrection, Nativities, and George and the Dragon, landscape near Rendsburg. And Scholbein the Younger, and Albrecht Aldorfer. And I saw pictures. So the different German castles. Uh, 
the sculpture that is just this and painting Albert Durer the different engravings some paintings this is amazing it's a drawing as uh, different self-portraits Hans Baldwin Green is three brood three Three witches. Amazing that it's done in Renaissance. It looks much later. Matthias Grunewald. This one is very beautiful. Hans Holbein de John. This is Erasmus of Rotterdam. Albrecht Aldorfer. Now England. In England, happens the same as in Germany. The Italian Renaissance is not adapted totally. Architecture. In times of Henry VIII, there is an introduction of Renaissance forms, but mainly about decoration. Palace of Hampton Court with four great courtyards. Over the bridge, you can see seals of King George II, sustained by lions and unicorns. It receives the name of Trophy Gates. This Hampton Court. Palace of Nonsuch. It is disappeared and was the palace of the royal family of the Tudor. Castle of Bolsover, it reached its most glory in the reigns of King John and Elizabeth I. Castle of King Bolton, it is well known because it was the final house and prison of Catherine of Aragon, wife of Henry VIII of England. It was built in Norman period, but in the 16th century it was reconstructed in Tudor style, English Renaissance. So Bolsover and King Bolton. Sculpture, very scarce, Pietro Torrigiano, this is the Italian man worked in London in the 16th century. He was who broke the nose of Michelangelo. Tomb of Henry VII, St. Geronimus. Choir of King's College of Cambridge, influence of Netherlandish workshops. Okay, now I saw England, very short. Okay, Netherlands. Renaissance is introduced here by French artists. Architecture, Gothic forms with some Renaissance arts. Antwerp City Hall by Cornelius de Brandt, Leiden City Halls and Houses of Kent. Sculpture introduced by Margaret of Austria, Conrad Maid, Judith and Tom of Margaret of Austria, Jean Mon, Altarpiece of St. Gudula in Brussels, Cornelis Floris de Brienz, Architect and Sculpture, Tabernacle of St. Lunar of Law, Coil of Tournai, Adrien de Brace, Manneries, Movement and Core Forms, Bronze, Mercury and Sitze, Laogonte. Different sculptures, the different authors, Adrien de Brace, this is most interesting. Painting. In the 16th century, the artistic center of the Netherlands goes from Bruges to Antwerp. The Mannerings is called Nordic Mannerings. Quentin Masses, influenced by Leonardo, with the scene of St. Anna, Body of Christ. Pachin Patinir, Landscapes, Baptism of Christ, Landscape with Caron crossing the stitch. Lucas van Leyden, Religious and Henry Pieces, Temptation of St. Anthony, Chess Players. Here are some examples of paintings. Bernard van Orley, retratist, Holy Family, Karel van Mander, painter, poet, and art historian, known by his recopilation of biographies of painters, founder of the Drawing Academy at, of Harlem, Garden of Love, Continents of Sibiu. Bartholomew Spranger, this one is my favorite, one of the best. Stylized and erotic figures of great colors, her portrait, Hercules and, De and Deyanira, Hercules and Ompalia, Minerva, Salmasis and Hermaphrodito, Angelica and Neodoro. Here you see on this Bartolome Spranger, I just love his paintings, very, very cool. Abraham Bloemart, painter and engravist, evolved to the tenebris naturalins of Caravaggio, but didn't practice the ugliness. Caravaggio is Baroque painter. He did all the painting genres, historic, allegoric, dramatic, still life, portraits, animal. Niobe crying for her sons, dedication of St. John the Baptist, landscape with trusting farmers, Venere e Amori. 
Hendrik Goldsius, ornaments and exaggerated musculatures, engravings, Lot and his daughter, Hand, Icarus, Pygmalion, Fortitude and Patience, Astronomy, Mercury and the Arts. Here are different paintings. Quatined with vile manneries, but later has influences of the naturalists of Caravaggio. Kitchen scene, Venus and Mars discovered by Vulcan, Venus and Mars discovered by the gods, Andromeda and Perseus, Martyrdom of Saint Sebastian, Adoration. Royal and Savary, landscape with exotic animals, you can even find dodos. Forest with deer, landscape with birds. Ambrosius Boschard, still life, vase with flowers in a window, still life. Here you see, and here the dodos are here. Ambrosius was charged. Martin the Boss, Last Mannerings, Temptation of St. Anthony, Final Judgment, St. Luke Painting the Virgin, Adam and Eve at the Expulsion of Paradise, Seven Liberal Arts. Cornelis van Harlem, one of the main painters, member of the School of Harlem, painted many portraits, Fall of the Titans, Banquet of the Official of the Company of St. George. Franz Hals, a painter that will also appear in Baroque, in the transition to Baroque, master of portraits, influence of Cornelis, self-portraits, René Descartes, Smiling Man, Happy Drinker, William Van Heijusen, Young Man with a School, Civic Militia, St. George of Harlem. Here are the different paintings. Now the last ones, very important. Peter Bruegel the Elder, he's the most important painter, well known by his landscape with many symbologies, hunting the snow, peace and wedding. He has some influence of Bosch, Fall of the Rebel Angels, Triumph of Death. Then Triumph of Death, the Triumph of Death over World Things, symbolized by an army of skeletons attacking Earth. Flemish Proverbs, it has more than 100 Flemish Proverbs of the time. Here are some of the paintings. This is the Triumph of Death and Flemish Proverbs. Dule Griet, also known as Matt Meg, a peasant woman that led that led an army of women to hell. Clarafle Lad, inspired in a book by Hans Sach, there are three men in the ground because they drank too much. They are fat and possible and possibly sleepy. Each one wearing different clothes clothes to represent the social classes, gentleman, peasant, a man of legend, student or cleric. Really great, and this is the other one. Tower of Babel, he painted two and symbolized the doom of the growing thirst and of power of the humans. Harvest, it represents the summer, the landscape is very important. Wine uh, being in the feast of St. Martin, many characters are on a red barrel in the center with various attitudes. Census of in Bethlehem, he used this theme to paint a snow landscape. Jan Bruegel, the elder, still life and later landscape, bouquet. Peter Bruegel, the younger, landscapes and religious and fantasy themes, uses to paint a lot of fire and grotesque figures. Part in the town, dance wedding, peace and wedding. Jan Bruegel, the younger, landscapes and allegoric scenes, copied artworks of his father, like animals entering the new arts, paradise. Peter Bruegel the Younger, Jan Bruegel the Younger. Now Spain, the last part. Here, some example of the buildings, now the sculptures, and the painting. Went in Massey, Joachim Patinir, this one is also very nice. Like, the landscape is the most important, this is just a small character in there. Lucas Van Leyden, Bernard Born Orley, Karen Van Mander, Bartholomew Spranger, very cool, Abraham Bloemart, Hendrik Goldsius, a thing with the vial. Royal and Savary here with the animals. Ambrosian Boss Child, Martin the Boss, Cornelis van Harlem. See this one with the clothes of the time. In Baroque, I will put more paintings with these clothes. Van Hals, the also has with the clothes of the time. Like this one. Peter Bruegel the Elder.
Jan Brugger the Elder, Peter Brugger the Younger, and Jan Brugger the Younger. And finally, Spain. It is introduced here at the end of the 15th century. It is divided in three periods. Laderesque, called so by the similarities with the work of jewelers, influenced by the Italian Quattrocento. At the beginning, it is introduced by Italian artworks that come to Spain by, and come to Spain and by importation of marbles. Castle of Calahorra, Palace of the Marquez de los Vélez. The introduction of Renaissance in Castilla was Lorenzo Vázquez, who did the next two constructions, Holy Cross College, Palace of Cogolludo, who did Okay. Pedro Gumiel creates a Cisneros style mixed between Renaissance and Arab forms, like the two next constructions, Capitular Hall of the Cathedral of Toledo and Auditorium of the University of Alcalá. Here this ceiling is very inspired by Arab forms. In Salamanca was Juan de Álava with the convent of San Esteban, faculty of the University of Salamanca of anonymous author. In Burgos is Francisco of Cologne, who did the door of Pellejería. In Andalucía, this style reaches a great grade of decoration. Here works Diego de Riaño, author of the next two constructions. City Hall of Sevilla, Sacristy of the Cathedral of Sevilla. Some examples. Purist Plateresque. It is at the end of the 16th century, where the forms have a more Spanish valor with more purins and monumental effects. In Toledo works Alonso de Covarrubias with more harmonic forms. He did the next three constructions, Archiepiscopal Palace of Alcalá de Henares, Holy Cross of Hospital, Noitis and Museum, Alcanzar of Toledo, and Nibis Sagra Cave. Here samples. In Salamanca works Rodrigo Gil de Jontañón, who did the facade of the University of Alcalá de Henares. In Burgos, in Burgos works Juan de Vallejo, who rebuilt the dome of the Cathedral of Burgos. In Aragón has importance the next three construction. Santa Engracia of Zaragoza, Lonja of Zaragoza, a civil building for economic activities, whose architect was, was Juan de Sariñena, and courtyard of the Infanta, very good decoration. In Andalucía, there are the most Typical Spanish, Spanish complexes. Palace of, Car of Charles V in the Alhambra, it is a circle in a squared front, typically Italian by Pedro Machuca. In Granada works Diego de Siloe, that before coming there he did the first two of the next three constructions. Tower of Santa Maria del Campo, Golden Stairway of Cathedral of Burgos. It is the Palace of Charles V, the Star Golden Stairway. Cathedral of Granada of five names separated by pillars with classic columns, Baroque facade by Alonso Cano. In Jaén works Andrés de Valdenvira. Cathedral of Jaén, great classicines with a Hallen Kirche of three naves. Top of the Giralda by Fernand Ruiz. This is the Cathedral of Granada and the Cathedral of Jaén. And this last part. Herrerian, in the very end of the 16th century, there is only monumentality, but a great monumentality, like in Italian Cinquecento. It is represented by the work of Juan Bautista of Toledo and Juan de Herrera. El Escorial, initiated by Juan Bautista de Toledo, when he died, Juan de Herrera finished it. It is a monastery, but also a pantheon and a palace. Cathedral of Valladolid by Juan de Herrera II of rectangular plan with towers. Lonja de Sevilla also by Juan de Herrera. This is El Escorial. This is the inside of El Escorial. Valladolid and Lonja de Sevilla. American colonies. The Spanish Renaissance forms are transmitted to the American colonies. In the first years, Gothic buildings were still constructed, like the Cathedral of Santo Domingo. New Spain, Nueva España, Mexico, the type of the buildings have a great atrium with a chapel. Teapaca and Teposcolula. This is Santo Domingo. Cathedral of Mexico, mix of three styles, Renaissance, Baroque and Neoclassical, inspired in the cathedrals of Jaén and Valladolid. Cathedral of Guadalajara, Newcastle, 
Nueva Castilla, en Perú, with Mudejar Influence, in the next two cathedrals collaborated Francisco Becerra, and both have the typical characteristic, with towers and complex of little height, not like the big Mexican towers, Cathedral of Lima and Cathedral of Cuzco. So this is Mexico, Guadalajara, Lima and Cuzco. Sculpture, introduced by relations with France and Italy. Italians who came to Spain are Domenico Francelli, Dom Domenico Fancelli, Sepulchre of Don Diego Hurtado de Mendoza, Sepulchre of Prince Don Juan, and Sepulchre of the Catholic Kings. Pietro Torricciano, who also worked in England, in Spain did the San Jerónimos. Finally, Jacobo Florentino e Indaco did Holy Berry. Did Holy Berry. Um, the Sepulchre of Cardinal Mendoza is by Anonymous. Imported artworks from Italy, St. John by Michelangelo and Sepulchres of Cartuja de las Cuevas in Sevilla. Here are some examples. First generation of Spanish artists, Vasco de la Zarta, Felipe Vigarni, Bartolomé Ordóñez, Diego de Siloé, and then... Vasco de la Zarza likes to decorate in, Itali in style of Italian Quattrocento. And Felipe Vigarni between Gothic and Renaissance. Then some example of artworks. Bartolomé Ordóñez, influence of Michelangelo with Choiro Barcelona, like this. Diego de Siloé, architect and sculptor, with this, a book of Don Alonso Fonseca. Great masters begin in the first third of the 16th century and give to the Italian forms Spanish characteristics. Castilla with Alonso Berruguete, Juan de Juni and others. Alonso Berruguete studied in Italy and has influences of Michelangelo. And he was, he was painter of Charles V. He likes movement. Here examples. Juan de Juni likes to study compositions, naturals, and then examples. Others like Jerónimo del Corral with Chapel of Benaventes, Isidro de Villoldo with altarpiece of Sacristy of Ávila, and Gaspar Becerra with altarpiece of Astorga. This building is very expressive. This is very close to Baroque. Chapel of Benaventes. In Aragon, it is Damian Forment and Gabriel Joy. Damian Forment, Gothic structure and Renaissance form. He works in Zaragoza mostly and Catalonia. And Gabriel Joy, altarpiece of San Agustin of Seo of Zaragoza. Here you see. Pilar of Zaragoza and Seo of Zaragoza. Classicines of El Escorial. In the last third of the century, the aesthetic classicines of Felipe II rises, called art. Pompeo Leoni, Sepulcro of Doña Juana en las Descalzas Reales de Madrid, Sepulcro of the Dukes of Lerma, Juan Bautista Monegro, Statue of the Kings of Judá. Here you see. And finally, painting. It is divided between first half of 16th century and second half of 16th century. First half in Castilla, the transition is represented by Pedro Berruguete, initiated in the Flemish painting. He goes to Italy, mix of Flemish and Indian influence and, and Italian influences. Altarpiece of Ave, well, here are different paintings. Other artist of Castilla is Juan de Borgoño with the Capitular Room of Toledo. Here paintings of Pedro Berruguete. And here the Capitular Room of Toledo by Juan de Borgoño. Andalucía with Alejo Fernández, Luis de Vargas, and Pedro de, Cam Pedro de Camapaña. I think it is Pedro de Campaña. One moment. Yes, Pedro de Campaña. Campaña. Levant, Francisco and Rodrigo de Osona with Flagellation, and Paolo de San Leocadio with Virgen del Caballero de Montesa, and Hernando Llanos with the Altarpiece of Valencia. See a painting of each one. Altarpiece of Palencia by Hernando Llanos. Second half, two groups of artists. Royal artists with Fernández de Navarrete, who works in El Escorial with self portraits, Martínez, Santiago, and Baptins of Christ. And also Alonso Sánchez Coello, the best painter of portraits with Prince Don Carlos, Isabel Clara Eugenia, and Felipe II. 
not royal artists, with Luis de Morales, with Virgin of the Mill, Christ justifying his passion, Agon in the Garden, San Juan, San Juan de Rivera, uh, Altar Face of Arroyo de la Luz de Cáceres, different painting. Uh, Fernando Navarrete, Alonso Sánchez Coelho, Luis de Morales. And the last one, El Greco, the most famous, Domenico Teotocopoulos. There is an evolution. At the beginning, there is Italian influence that liberates with time searching a technique of color stains and light effects. Martyr on San Mauritius, Trinity of Things, Crucifixion, Burial for God's Count, Coming of the Holy Spirit, View of Toledo, Curation of the Blind, Dream of Felipe II, Laoconte, Christ and the Cross, Expolio, Altarpiece of Doña Maria de Aragon, and Portrait of Man, considered self-portrait. This painter has a very unique style. Here you see more paintings and more paintings. And it's finished. This is just the summary. Okay, I saw more pictures. <clears throat> Spanish architecture. This one is very beautiful. This one very beautiful also. Palace of Charles V. Here. El Escorial. American colonies. This one is very good. Now sculptures, mostly sarcophagus, religious stuff. And these altar pieces. Spanish sculptors like the other pieces very much. Then the painting, Pedro Berruguete, Juan de Borgoña, Alejo Fernández, different painters. And then El Greco. And it's finished. Okay. Now the presentation is finished, but I'm going to continue with the literature, of course. So then some interesting books to read that were made in Renaissance times. A Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. It's a political treaty as instructions to be a prince. And here it says that to be powerful, you have to do everything that you need to do, even if it's bad. Uh, to have uh, Having power should be more important than ethics. Then there is the Utopia by Thomas More. That is the description of a, of a fantastic island with a very specific government that most of the text is about the government and it's like the perfect place but in reality it's not that perfect because there are some things that are kind of bad but well you must consider the time another one is Dr. Fausto 
Ivan Gradin and Rina Sentine, Dr. Fausto uh, by Christopher Marlowe. This one is very interesting because it's a man who wants power and then he sells his soul to the devil and the devil sends a demon to be uh, the servant of this man. This man is called Faustus. But time passes and he um, tries to get forgiveness because he repents of selling the soul but at the end the devil gets his soul and he dies. It's very cool book and also very short. So I really recommend it. Now Shakespeare, of course you know Shakespeare. A very important English writer, especially because theater. He did like uh, words like Dream of a Night of Summer, Othello, Macbeth, Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet. For me the most interesting is Hamlet and Romeo and Juliet, so I'm just going to focus on that. Hamlet, Shakespeare, let's see if there are some paintings or anything. Hamlet, the spirit of his father. So it's a Hamlet, is the main character. And the spirit of his father asked him to avenge him because he was murdered by his own brother, Claudio. And Hamlet, and so many things happen, and at the end, Hamlet ends dead. Uh, of course, Claudio ends dead. Um, he asked the prince for Timbras to be the heir of the throne of Denmark because this is um, ambience in Denmark. I told a very, very, very short summary. I enjoyed this one, it was nice, so I suggest, I encourage you to take a read. It's also very short. The best part for me is when the spirit of the father appears. And then Romeo and Julieta. Romeo and Juliet. This is also very nice. I enjoy reading this. And Romeo is a montage and Juliet is a capulet. There are families that are enemies. They fall in love and a priest marry them in secret. The cousin of Juliet, called Tybalt, challenges Romeo to a duel, but he says no. And his friend Mercutio fights um, Tybalt kills him. So then Romeo gets angry and kills Tybalt. After this, Romeo is scared, obviously, and he, ple he fled to Mantua. Uh, with this separation, the father of Juliet says that she's going to marry with a man called Count Paris. Because remember that the marriage of this family is of the, uh, Romeo and Juliet was kind of in secret, and the families are enemy so it's like the father wants to marry Juliet with another man that is like his friend so Juliet goes to the priest who married her with Romeo and asks um, him for um for some help so the priest says I give you this potion so you will look like you are dead but you will not be dead so while you look dead your father and the Count Paris will think that you are dead and they will cancel the wedding. So I will be waiting at your tomb for Romeo who will come and then you can escape with him. So this is what happens but the, uh, the priest tries to send a message to Romeo explaining the situation but this message didn't arrive correctly and Romeo thinks that she's, die she's dead. So when Romeo reaches the tomb she sees that she's dead even if she's not really dead, and Romeo kills his son with some poison that he got in an apothecary. When Juliet awakes, he sees that Romeo is dead, and then Juliet kills herself with a dagger. And also, uh, when Romeo is in the tomb, then the Count Paris appears, and they fight, and Romeo kills the Count, so he also dies. And at the end, the father of Juliet Reach, reach the tomb and they see that Juliet wasn't dead but now he's, she's really dead his, uh, her mother dies of grief and so and this is how it ends it's very good I enjoyed this and now some Spanish books so there is uh, Garcilaso de la Vega this writer uh, is a writer of poetry then there is Juan de Encina uh, another man who writes some stuff. 
Jorge Manrique. I'm writing the name so you can just check if you are interested. Jorge Manrique, another one who writes poetry, especially the Coplas a la Muerte de su Padre, is like some poems to the death of his father for the death of his father. Um and more. And now some very famous ones. La Celestina by Fernando de Rojas. This is um, also called the tragic comedy of Callisto and Melibea. Callisto falls in love with Melibea and she rejects, she rejects him. So he goes to ask for help to Celestina. Celestina is like an old woman who is like let me think how to say in English. Like she, at, she tries to make people to be in love and she's like uh, spreading rumors and this kind of person. Uh, like this kind of very hateful person who is like uh, putting his... Uh, it's a kind of person who you, who you will say, mind your business and leave me alone. I think you get my point. So there are some dramas with the um, the servants of Callisto and the um, servants of Melibea that by the way the servants of Melibea are prostitutes. Some stuff happened. Celestina is killed, is murdered, and there is some noises. And then Callisto is going to jump a wall, but he falls and died. And then Melibea. Uh, sees him and suicide, and then the fathers cry. Oh, oh, oh yes, I I forgot to say, yeah. With the help of Celestina, Callisto and Melibea then fall in love, and then they are together. And then there is the drama of the servants. Celestina is killed. The servants are also killed. Just something crazy happens, and at the end, Callisto and Melibea they die also. It's kind of funny. Mm, the other. So you can take a look if you wish. Another one that is very famous is Lazarillo de Tormes. Lazarillo de Tormes is a poor kid that has to survive with some masters. He has many masters and all of, with all of them he has some adventures. This book is also very short, very funny and I really enjoyed reading it. So one of them is the evil blind man. I'm taking pictures to see if I can see. So it's the evil blind man and then Lazarillo is trying to steal the food because the evil blind man doesn't want to give him food. In one of the episodes, it's like... Uh, Lazarillo wants to drink the wine, but the blind man has the wine uh, vessel in his legs. So Lazarillo is like under the chair and he does a small hole in the vessel and so the wine can fall. But the blind man notices about this and then he does like this and throws the vessel in the face of Lazarillo and then it's like very terrible. He has to go to hospital to be healed. So yes, very evil. Then another master is the is a priest that is very greedy. He has some food in a um, coffer and doesn't want to give Lazarillo food. So Lazarillo finds the key and steal the bread and the food, but eat it as if it is a mice. So the um, priest won't suspect that it's him who is stealing the but at the end it is discovered and Lazarillo doesn't end very well. So he has to find another master. And the next one is a poor knight. It's a knight that he apparent he looks like he's rich, but in reality he's very poor. And it ends kind of funny because the knight owes money and the people are going to reclaim the money and then he's like okay i go to get the money and pay you and then he goes and he never returns and then lazario has to find another master 
So after this one, he goes with um. Uh, one moment, I want to say in order. Uh, yes, he goes with a friar who walks two mods, and then Lazarillo is always tired, so he goes to find another master. He finds a doctor who is a scammer who tries to sell um a kind of ring to heal everything, but it's a scam. So at the end, Lazarillo is like, even if he gets money and can eat nice and such, he feels very bad because all the scams, so he leaves. And at the end, he gets some jobs and even gets a house and married and lives well. So yes, that's the story. And then the final work is Don Quixote de la Manta by Miguel de Cervantes. So this is very famous Spanish story. He is a man who gets crazy with the books of knights and he believes himself is a walking knight. His shield man is Sancho Panza, who is this man. His horse is called Rocinante and he is in love with an imaginary woman that is called Dulcinea del Toboso. And he is usually called as the Caballero de la Triste Figura or the Knight of the Sad Figure. Because this is a name that Sancho Panza says to him because he always looks crazy and sad and such. So it's divided in two parts and the story, both the story of the book and the story told in the book and the story outside the book is very interesting. So you will understand. So first, Cervantes writes the first part. A poor man called Alonso Guijano, although the name is not revealed until the end, he believes himself to be a walking knight because he reads too many books of knights. He confuses um, like hostels with castles and many crazy things. And he usually ends um, being hit, like people hit him and he is like, I don't know how to say in English, he's beaten, he's beaten. So there are many episodes, like for example this, when he confuses the uh, windmills with giants. Um, he also confuses ships with army. Uh, he goes to do penitency in Sierra Morena, and there are other characters appearing. Uh, other characters, characters appearing. He also confuses some wine, uh, wine recipients with heads of giants, and he's like fighting. And he says, "But I'm good in the heads of the giant. You see the blood." And then they say, "No, it's not blood. It's wine. You are making holes in the recipients." And for everything. When people say that you are crazy, you are confusing things and such, then Don Quixote says that there are enchanters that create these illusions. And at the end, he just returns home. So after the first part, there is another writer that is not sure who he is, but it's called Son Avellaneda. Writes a Don Quixote continuation that it's like a fake Quixote. Let's, let's call it the fake Quixote. In this story, Don Quixote goes to Zaragoza to see um, a just, like a tournament of knights. Then Cervantes, the original writer, uh, takes this very bad and then he writes the second part. Uh, having fun of this fake Quixote. And at the end, Cervantes will kill Don Quixote so other people won't do more continuations. So what is this, the second part? The people has already read the first part and Don Quixote and Sancho Panza are famous. Don Quixote goes to Zaragoza as in the fake Quixote. First they are going to visit Dulcinea, the supposed um, love of Don Quixote, but this woman is kind of doesn't exist. It is inspired in a real person, but it's just fake, everything is fake. So Sancho Panza does some uh, lies to to make that don, that this Dulcinea is a random woman, a very ugly woman, and then Don Quixote finds her, and this woman is very annoying to him, and then Don Quixote says, Dulcinea is enchanted. See, it is not the Dulcinea that I'm in love. She's enchanted. Then there are there is a duel with 
strong one called the Knights of the Mirrors. That in reality it is Sansón Carrasco that is a um, neighbor friend of Don Quixote that he wants to uh, win Don Quixote in a duel and then ask him to stay in his home for one year because yes there are some characters of the town of Don Quixote that don't are worried about him being crazy and going out there to be beaten and confuse things and be in danger so they want him to stay in his home and just be safe but in this duel Don Quixote wins so he continues his journey um so there are some episodes uh with the descending of in a cave of montesinos where quixote dreams some crazy things there is an adventure with lions there is um uh what this is said in english some um okay it will be better with a monkey who talks supposedly um then they meet some dukes and duchess and they are like friends but in reality they are kind of louting of them uh there is a kind of wooden horse who who flight um the let me just see if i can find some picture of this something very weird and Sancho Panza is a ruler of an island or a fake island because Don Quixote is like, you come with me and that when I'm famous and rich and I have adventures and such, I will give you an island and you will rule. And Sancho Panza is all the time having this fantasy and the dukes fulfill this fantasy. But Sancho Panza thinks that it's too hard to rule an island and then he just uh, returns with Don Quixote. And now the funniest part is they continue their way to Zaragoza and then they find a character that appears in the fake Quixote. They talk and they this fake fake this character from the fake Quixote says the real Don Quixote. I um I fought um, with a Quixote in Zaragoza and he lost and whatever. And then they talk about this fake Quixote and this and the real Don Quixote says. You say that Don Quixote goes to Zaragoza, that then just for the point, just on purpose, to contradict this, I'm not going to Zaragoza, I'm going to Barcelona. So on purpose, he uh, changed the storyline of the fake Quixote. So this second part is like the real Quixote and he goes to Barcelona instead. In there, he fights against the Knight of the White Moon. That is the same Sansón Carrasco had explained before. And this time, Sansón Carrasco wins and says, As I have won, now you have to do what I say. And I say that you return to your home and you must stay in your home for one year. So they return to their home. But when they return, Don Quixote is very sad about having lost and having to stay one year. He has some dreams about becoming a um, shepherd but at the end he falls ill and before dying he admits that he was crazy he admits who he is really for real he's Alonso Guijano just a normal man he's not a knight he was just crazy and at the end he dies uh, so this is the story of Don Quixote I'm going to try to show a video of something and uh, Don Quixote animal here Well, this is 22 minutes. Uh, well. Okay, this is the windmills. Let's see. I haven't seen this. I haven't had time, so it's the first time I see this. So let's see how it is. Okay, okay. I want to do some uh, 
Let's see. Okay, these. La aventura nos guía mejor de lo que acertáramos a desear, Sancho. Pues con esos desaforados gigantes entraré en batalla. Que es buen servicio quitar tan mala siguiente de la tierra. ¡Qué gigantes! Aquellos que ves de largos brazos, que los suelen tener casi de dos leyes. <risa> ¡No huyáis, cobardes y viles criaturas! ¡Que un solo caballero es el que os acomete! ¡Mire vuestra merced, que no son gigantes, sino molinos de viento! ¡Y lo que parecen brazos son las aspas que mueven la piedra del molino! ¡No sabes nada de aventuras! ¡Son gigantes! Si tienes miedo, quítate de ahí! Que voy a entrar contra ellos en fiera y desigual batalla! <risa> Dije que eran molinos de viento y no gigantes. Calla, amigo Sancho, porque las cosas de la guerra, más que otras, están sujetas a continua mudanza, porque el sabio Frestón ha transformado esos gigantes en molinos para quitarme la gloria de vencerlos. Tal es la enemistad que me tiene. <risa> had transformed the giants in windmills to remove my glory. <laughs> okay, let's see if another if there is another episode worth worth showing. Um I don't know. Okay, just that I think that is enough. Okay, so it's finished. I hope you learned a lot with this stream. The next one will be Baroque art. So until then, have a good day and see you next time.